This week's Asian Voices comes to you from Bangladesh. Bangladesh has attracted much attention around the world thanks to its rapidly growing economy. Yet poverty still prevents a major challenge for this country of 150 million people. BRAC is a non-profit organization that has played a key role in reducing poverty in Bangladesh. It is involved in many projects including banking services for the poor and operating a chain of clothing stores. The group funnels its profits back into programs that work to solve the country's problems. Sir Fazal Hazan Abad is the founder and chairperson of BRAC. He built the organization into what has become one of the world's largest NGOs. It employs 120,000 people and has a budget of about $550 million. Opportunities should be equal to people. Oh. So that's what we, what we are trying to provide, better opportunities for poor people mm -hmm. so that they can succeed in life. We sat down with Sir Fazal and asked him what it will take for Bangladesh to escape poverty. Abed's office on the 19th floor commands a view of downtown Dhaka. Staying in these places, mm -hmm. and we have got. Uh, Looking outside the window, uh, you must be kind of a face with the reality of the Bangladesh today, with the, the high rise uh, shooting up, right. as well as some of the slum area. Well, this is something that we have gone used to in Bangladesh, seeing the stark differences between the rich and the poor. We are so honoured to be invited into your office. So this is where you work every Thank day. But how much time do you spend in your office per day? I think about uh, eight to ten hours a day. It's not too much, like the like the Japanese uh, salary man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That's but, quite a lot, but, though. But uh, I have reduced the number of hours I used to work. Uh, so in the in the old days when I was younger, I used to work about more than ten hours a day. Oh. But now it's uh, restricted to 8 to 10 hours. I see. So you are no longer a Japanese then? <laughs> no, no. And Brock is the, the world's largest non-governmental organization, as people say. And with the activities being so, so diverse... Poor people's lives are affected by many things. Mm. It's not just income or just lack of water or just lack of uh, education. It, it, it's all of it, mm. all lack of opportunities of various kinds. And BRAC is, uh, has uh, worked on many of these things which uh, affects poor people. Bangladesh gained independence from Pakistan in 1971. The country has been posting nearly 6% annual growth in recent years, led mainly by its brisk textile industry. But poverty still remains a grave problem. 70% of the population live on less than $2 a day. Abed founded BRAC in 1972, when he was 36 years old. After resigning from his post as an executive of a major oil company, he started the NGO shortly after independence in the hopes of solving the dire poverty in Bangladesh. BRAC's activities cover various fields including education, health and hygiene, as well as microfinance which involves offering small loans. The group provides assistance to 135 million people in 11 countries around the world. BRAC has been able to expand its non-profit activities because of its business strategy. It operates for-profit enterprises in various fields such as banking, IT services and the dairy industry and uses the profits to cover 70% of the costs of its NGO activities. 
One of Brack's core businesses is a company called Arong. It's Bangladesh's leading fashion brand. Cheaper products which are not... Arong's clothing targets middle-class and wealthy shoppers. The company combines traditional Bangladeshi clothing styles with sophisticated designs from overseas. Again, some block prints. So elaborate. Yes. And beautifully done. Huh? All, all hand embroidered. All hand embroidered. Yes, absolutely. But it requires absolutely. a lot of skill. A lot of skills and uh, and a lot of... Uh, so do you sometimes put forward your own ideas as to why not this year, since the trend colour is pink, for example? <laughs> right. Well, I know that our designers yes. study these colours, mm -hmm. uh, trends, and things right. like that, quite mm -hmm. professionally. So I don't interfere there. Mm -hmm. products are mostly manufactured in rural areas. The company is aiming to create jobs for women in farming villages with few employment opportunities and help them gain financial independence. About 600 women are employed at this factory. By working in a well-ordered environment, they're able to gain embroidery and sewing skills while earning valuable cash income. Brack's for-profit businesses earn money to fund non-profit activities and also create jobs. That's the original system Abed has established. And, and um, about Brock, you know, many NGOs you know, rely on outside donation yes. to fund their activities, right. but the Brock earns more than 70% of its annual budget through its own programs. Right. Um, it's almost like a uh, like business-like organization. It is a, it is a business-like organization because I think we can also do good by doing business. Mm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, so so it is a, it, the businesses do some good. For example, Arong is providing opportunities for large numbers of artisans in rural areas who do not have access to a market. They sell through Arong. Mm -hmm. So Arong is a very uh, is a is a quite a profitable enterprise. Mm -hmm. Also for Bragg. Mm -hmm. So so the, what is uh, the profit that is generated by Arong again goes into our education, healthcare, and other programs. So so it's it's helping Bragg uh, in financing its mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. programs, mm -hmm. and also it's helping to provide marketing outlet for rural artisans mm -hmm. who otherwise would find it very difficult to uh, market their products. Well, I, I found uh, Aron a very dangerous place where women can be quickly sucked in. <laughs> you liked our product very yes, much. Yes, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, some organizations, I mean, p people do come and purchase the goods right, for the right, cause, right, right, and right. perhaps not necessarily for the quality. Yes, right. But with regards to Aron's uh, products, your products, I think many do come for the quality also. Yes, yes, they do. They mm. do. And we, it is not just the cause. Mm. Many people don't even realize that Arong is, was, uh, is uh, owned by Brack mm. and it's mm. a non-profit organization. Mm -hmm. uh, many people just go to Arong and buy things because they like it. That, that must be the, the key to, to success. Key to success, yes. Mm. Whatever we do, we try to do it in a business-like way. Mm -hmm. So even if helping poor people, to market their products, uh, we t t teach them how to make quality goods, so that people are attracted to their goods and mm. not uh, they are not looking for uh, handouts. So they should be deserving the uh, the price that they get mm -hmm. from customers. Because if it's a business, it has to be sustainable. Absolutely. You know, if it's like charity or donation. Yeah. Yeah. It may not be sustainable. It may not be sustainable. And that's one of the reasons why we, we decided to, to make our own a business rather mm. than uh, a not-for-profit enterprise. Kind. It does seem like you are sort of providing a sort of a lesson to um, private sectors where some tend to think the profit maximizing is the, their ultimate goal. Yes. But perhaps um, in the world that we live in today, 
the private sectors may not be able to survive that way. That's true, and I think I think private sector is also starting to realize mm. that in order to survive, they have to take a long-term view mm. of their business and the way this they they serve. Um, businesses, uh, because they take a short-term view, many of them don't survive. And you see a lot of businesses goes and uh, goes out of existence mm. very quickly. Mm. You have your own experience of having worked as a financial officer for a major yeah. institution. Th does that help uh, in running your organization? Yeah, I think, I think being, uh, having worked as in a large business uh, like Shell, uh, was very helpful in the mm -hmm. sense that it showed me that, be, that large enterprises don't necessarily need to be ugly. Mm -hmm. It's not only so small is beautiful, but large is impactful. Mm -hmm. So that's the why I, uh, from, from early beginning of BRAC, we decided to have uh, an impact on Bangladesh's poverty. Mm -hmm. And in order to have an impact on Bangladesh's poverty, we needed to become a large organization with um, multiple types mm -hmm. of ent enterprises and, and activities mm -hmm. so that poverty could be attacked from many different mm -hmm. uh, angles. And uh, such a large organization where the employees share the, the goal that you have envisioned. That's right, that's right. And also, uh, we, are, we are very result-oriented, mm. like a business. Mm, very <laughs> much so. Yes. We, we have a research department, an evaluation department. We have monitoring goes on all the time, uh, whether we are successful in doing something. So we first want to be effective mm -hmm. in what we do. Mm -hmm. Then we want to be efficient. Mm -hmm. And then we, want, we scale up things uh, to cover the entire country. Oh, so that's the uh, mm -hmm. kind of methodology that I have employed really? throughout my career in BRAC try and uh, make it a successful organization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, serving the poor, interest of the poor. Mm. And, and you have been in this business for more than 40 years. Yes. So what so prompted you in the first place initially? The first place, I suppose, I was uh, very much uh, concerned about the poverty in our country and how po people are deprived of basic uh, mm. needs, mm. basic essentials. Food, for example, half initially in Bangladesh when the uh, poverty was even in more intense 40 years ago. Mm. So there were quite a lot of people who go who went hungry, uh, and there are children who are malnourished. Mm -hmm. Which is a quarter of our children died before their fifth birthday. And you'd seen one um, at a very early stage of a career, no, yes. the cyclone. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That was one in 1970, mm -hmm. which killed almost 300,000 people. This was one of the worst natural disasters in history. And I saw that, I saw human, you know, crops, crops strewn all over the countryside, um, washed away by the tidal bore cyclone, after the cyclone. So we, I've seen a lot of deaths and destruction, and which sort of changed my life in a way. I decided to work for the poor, mm. because it's the poor who died from the cyclone, mm. not the rich people, who, who had better have homes, and their homes were not uh, mm. washed away by the cyclone. Mm -hmm. So they survived, but the poor people who died. So that's the reason why I decided to uh, put my efforts to help poor people mm -hmm. to come out of poverty or at least have a decent uh, life. Right. Because those deaths can be prevented with the right infrastructure and the right uh, like uh, awareness elevating education and things these days sure sure ultimately ultimately you have to work on all areas of which affect poor people mm -hmm. and if you can bring their uh, bring opportunities for poor people to be able to have access to these uh, uh, opportunities then they can uh, come out of poverty mm -hmm. and you often speak about uh, providing opportunities Opportunity means that um, a person born as a poor, poor in the in a poor family will have opportunity to like uh, a person living uh, born in a comparatively well-to-do family. That's an opportunity in terms of quality of education, opportunity in terms of uh, better health services. Um, so all kinds of opportunities. If you are bright enough, you can take the opportunity and reach the top. 
Uh, but uh, so it's it, it's all depends on individual talents and so on. To in the but opportunities should be equal to people. Oh, oh. So that's what we, what we are trying to provide better opportunities for poor people, mm -hmm. so that they can succeed in life. Driving two hours from the capital, Dhaka, we visited a rural district. Abed puts great effort into education. Brack has founded about 38,000 educational facilities called Brack Schools, which offer education to more than one million children. Even though primary education is free in Bangladesh, only about 70% of children finish elementary school. Some parents feel it's more important for their kids to work, while other children can't attend school because it's too far from home. Abed is trying to provide educational opportunities by opening up classes with available places and times for children. What do you want to become when you grow up? What is your dream? I want to be CID officer. I want to be lawyer. I want to be pilot. I want to be judge. To be a journalist, I think it's important to be interested in many things, many things around you. How exciting your country is, how exciting the world is. Bragg is also focusing on developing people who can lead Bangladesh's future. It founded a university in 2001 to offer education in areas vital for the country's growth, such as computer science and business administration. The school is affiliated with many prominent universities abroad and offers exchange programs. Its goal is to nurture talents who can demonstrate leadership not only in Bangladesh, but also around the world. You have stressed the importance of uh, education. Yes. And, um, but the figures are improving, as you say. Yes. But like adult literacy rate um, is like 56.8% of as of year 2010. Yes. And, and those children, uh, there are quite a number of children who are unable to finish a primary education still. Yes. That continues to be a problem. It is, it is a, still a problem. I think mm. there are still probably about two to three million children mm. out of school right now in Bangladesh. And we are trying to cover as many as we can. But because Millennium Development Goals is uh, only 600 days away, uh, the end of yes. 2015. Yes all children are supposed to be in school. Hmm. So we are trying to get as many children in school as possible and then provide them a quality primary education. So the, even uh, this year we are also expanding our school system and taking on as many children as we can in mm. our school system. Mm -hmm. So we are doing our best you where know. we can help and we are also trying to help the government to take as many children as they can in Bangladesh. Right. But. Um, it is a time-consuming process, though. I mean, yes. it doesn't mean that a child goes to school and the next day it's, it's, a, it's a direct key to success. It it's, doesn't work like that, no, does it? No, no it's not, it doesn't work like that, but mm. we need to provide quality education to everybody. Mm. So if we can provide that, at this moment, we can provide quality education to a microscopic small portion of our people mm. who are having private tuition private education. Mm -hmm. uh, if state education can provide high quality education, then almost everybody would be coming under it. But talking about ed education, I'm reminded of my, my uh, own coverage in I India, where I went to a, a, a garbage plot where children were picking up garbage. Black, black pickers, yeah. Yes, and then selling them yes, yes. to earn like a dollar a day or something right. and NGOs went to convince the, the mothers that children should be in school yes and then the mother asks uh, if my child goes to school how much would he be able to earn a day right and the NGO staff couldn't 
provide answer. an answer. Right, right. Uh, so that's right. a dilemma, isn't it? Right. Very difficult. So, so what we have done, I know that some children, because of poverty, has to work. Mm. And so what we have done is that we asked these children who work, or working children, what is the best time of the day that you can spare to come to school? So if they say between three and five in the afternoon, we'll, we'll set the school at that time. Mm -hmm. So that we will, uh, we can, so that we can provide education. So if they say that this a time, a particular time is suitable for them to come, we will we'll do our schools at that time. So we will respond to the needs of the working children, mm. the way they see their opportunities to learn oh. something. Mm. And I'm sure that there are lots of children who are poor, who has to earn something for the family, uh, also wants to learn. So mm. we want to provide them opportunity to do that. It's another kind of a business model, isn't it? Almost like, yes, like yeah. a meeting the it's a customer oriented approach. Sort absolutely, of. Oh. absolutely. And that's what we want to do. Everybody needs um, access to resources. Mm -hmm. Poor people's struggles, dreams, aspirations are the same everywhere. So you have to respond to them mm -hmm. with the right kind of uh, 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 opportunities and, they, and, they, and they, they, they respond very quickly. They, oh. they welcome any opportunities to improve their life. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, providing them with the, the, the seed or something That's so right. that they can That's, They can do grow. it themselves, mm -hmm. yeah. Ultimately, development is about how people do things for themselves. Our job as a development organization is to create opportunities, okay. is to create the right enabling condition mm -hmm. for them to do it. So when we say that uh, we have helped poor people to come out of poverty through microfinance. What we have done is provided financial services to them. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who have used the money uh, to work on them, uh, work hard, did business or grew food and made money out of it. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones who are doing all the hard work. Uh -huh. We are only providing certain services mm -hmm. and if we provide these services well, then we, we are satisfied. Mm -hmm. And all the hard work is being done by the poor to come out of poverty. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think. So it's not Brack who is doing all the hard work. The hard work is done done by the poor people mm -hmm. to get themselves out of poverty. Self help principle. Self help principle. Oh. Yeah. Your initiatives and activities are so diverse. I mean, don't people sometimes say you function like a government? They say it, but then we are not, a gov not the mm. government. Government has to do uh, the work that, uh, that needs to be done, but, but we help the government in many different ways. Mm. Uh, uh, so we are complement to, the go complement to the government. Mm. We complement mm. government efforts. Mm. But, but some say um, when uh, an NGO as influential and as powerful as the BRAC right. uh, functions well, it could often let the government off the hook, in a sense. Yes, they, they say that, but then uh, it is, I have not seen that the government has uh, not done something because BRAC is doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, government, uh, for example, we have helped the government to immunize all children. Mm -hmm. so, so, so we have helped them, but then uh, the government has now is completely able to immunize children. So now 95% of our children are even getting immunized and BRAC is not involved in immunization at all. So we are helping out our government. Our government also, poor, and in poor country, the government is also poor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't have all the resources that it needs to help provide education to all children. Right. So we are helping out in the process. Mm -hmm. But some uh, donor countries do point out that the, the, the seriousness of the, the perhaps lack of governance on the part of the government can be an impediment to Bangladesh's development and growth. 
I think yes, of course, mm -hmm. the lack of governance, there is a lack of governance, there will, it is a serious impediment. Uh, there are also, uh, one hears uh, a lot of uh, corruption in the right. government, right. which are also impediment mm -hmm. to the, so, so we are also working to improve the governance in the country. In our university, we have got a uh, civil course for civil servants oh, wow. who come for one year to our university and we provide a one year course in, in MA mm -hmm. in governance and, and development. Oh, so, so rather than filing a, a complaint or uh, making noises about the government not uh, being uh, transparent or accountable, hmm. you would rather uh, try Make and... Make them accountable. We are organizing people to get their rights, right. to be aware of what mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they can expect from the government, to make government accountable. So, so we work, at, work on these things at the grassroots level, mm -hmm. so that people ask the right question to the elected officials mm -hmm. at the local government. But with your activities um, expanding and diversifying, so much to do, as you said. And would there ever be a day when you can say your mission is accomplished? I don't think uh, our mission will be accomplished uh, in, to in totality. What will happen is that our work will change. For example, right now we are focusing our attention on giving primary education to all children. Next generation of work may be secondary education, quality secondary education mm -hmm. for children in Bangladesh. So from 10 years from now, we'll be working on providing secondary education to all children. Mm -hmm. So this work will change, uh, slightly change in a different direction. It's a long haul. It's a long said. haul, yes, thank you. But, but you'll be prepared to, to take that. Well, yeah, I think Breck is here to stay. I'm, I probably won't survive, uh, won't exist in the long haul, but, but Breck will go on. I, I hope this is an institution which will survive uh, many years mm -hmm. and continue to serve Bangladesh's development needs and particularly its poor. Well, thank you very much, Sir Hazel, for taking the time for us today. Thank you. Thank you very much you. for having me in your program. Thank you.